What is going on everybody? Welcome to part two of our Django tutorial series. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about how to add another app basically because our website right now doesn't really have anything. We've got our kind of main hub going on but we don't have any apps and as we said before a website is a combination of apps so we need at least one app. So uh, that's what we're going to do here. Now in the last tutorial we started off with uh, running the server. My server is still running so to break that server uh, you can do control C and then I'll put you back into that my site directory. Now what we're going to do is we're going to reference that manage.py. Again, uh, I explicitly reference Python, but you can probably just do Python manage.py or even Python 3 manage.py and so on. Uh, I'm just going to hit the up arrow because actually we just referenced manage.py. We're not going to run server. Instead, we're going to start app. And then you can give this application anything you want, like any name that you want. Uh, I'm just going to call it web app. So the idea here is, uh, in, in, in the interest of keeping things as simple as possible, yet also useful, the first thing that we're going to do is just build like a personal website. And the personal website will have some, you know, about me page, uh, and then like a blog that you can post on, something like that. Uh, and then from there we can go on to make a much more complex website possibly, but for now we'll keep it pretty simple, yet actually end up with something somewhat useful hopefully for you in the end. Uh, so now we've created, we've done the start app, web app, let's go ahead and move this over. And I'm currently in my site, my site, which is that central hub. Let's go back a directory, and now you should have a new one called web app. Let's go ahead and click on that. And you should see here actually we've got migrations, init.py, admin, apps, models, tests, and views. So we've got a few extra things that we didn't quite have in that original my site. So in its same reason, it's treated as its own app. Admin is for administration stuff, we'll leave that for now. Apps, uh, we can open this up real quick. Um, right now, and probably in the nearish future, these will never be edited or won't be edited. Uh, then models, this is what contains uh, database information as well as just some simple metadata. Tests is one of those things I was talking about before where Django just makes you do it the right way. You don't have to do tests, but what tests are is like, let's say you've got a login form, okay? And you've got users logging in and you sanitize input because you don't want someone to do an SQL injection or something like this. Uh, a new update comes out and suddenly we find out there's some other things that we have to do to sanitize input. So you change that and then lo and behold you change that and then like a week later you find out users aren't able to register because uh, some something broke in your registration process. Well, that's the whole point of tests. Uh, so on you have two choices if you want to be proactive against, uh, or two main choices, or at least there's two main things people do to be proactive against this. First, they make changes, and then what they do is manually run through every process. Well, when you're just starting, let's say you just have a forum, okay, well, you only have so many processes. Register, login, forgot password, uh, post, edit post, something like that, okay? So there's only a few, but like, let's say you've got a, a large website with a lot of functionality. There's a lot of things that can go wrong for every single update. So what tests do is every update you make, everything you do, you write a test in here, a test class, let's say, and it's just some code that will run through uh, registering, logging in, editing, every time you run a test. That way you don't have to do it manually. It'll just run through and test it for you. So this file will actually probably, by the time your website's complete, it would be a very big, ugly file but a super useful time-saving file. So a lot of people think, you know, making tests um, is a waste of time. You're not actually developing or creating anything new, um, but it, it actually will save you a lot of time in the end. But we'll leave that for now. That's, uh, we will talk about how to make your own test, don't worry. And then you've got views. This is just how, what the user sees, basically. So Django's a model view controller. Uh, you've got your models, your views, and the urls.py is your controller. So let me pull up a picture here. So uh, in the past, our previous picture in the last tutorial was just this uh, with the web project and then all your sub apps basically. We can now kind of populate that a bit more and you'll see why in this tutorial. So the main website has its own urls.py. You've seen it, but it currently doesn't really do much. So you've got your urls.py which controls and it links to all the other apps in your project or all of the apps in your project and each app has a 
will have at least. It doesn't currently have a urls.py by default, uh, but it will have urls.py, and then you've got, oops, I moved the picture. You've got models, views, and uh, so every app will consist of that, and just below it you can see urls.py just controls what's served, models is your database structure and your metadata, metadata, and then views is basically what the end user winds up seeing. The reason why we do things this way rather than say the Flask way, um, at least at the basic, like Flask, you could do a model view controller paradigm with Flask. Nothing stops you from doing it. You just have to do it yourself, okay? But what Django does is it just has it built in place for you. So the reason for that is so you can do something like this. You've got one app website, right? And it has an app of a forum, but maybe you want another website that uh, is just a forum or something. You can literally just like take that exact app and move it right on over to your other website. And um, on that same kind of thread, you actually can download other people's apps and use them really quick and really easy. So that's why this Django paradigm just makes a whole lot of sense uh, to use. So moving along, um, we need to go ahead and get started making our own, um, basically connecting this app. So every time you start an app, what do we do from there? Well, first of all, if we come over here to our settings here, we'll, we should see, we'll scroll down to installed apps, uh, that it just simply doesn't exist here. We don't actually have um, this, our, uh, our new app basically just is not here. So the first thing that you might wanna do is just add web app. There are a couple things that you can do here. The easiest thing that you can say is just web app, just add it that way. So we'll go ahead and, in, and again, this is in that my site, okay? My site slash settings. Just add web app comma and you're good to go. These other things are just defaults. You could remove some of these, I suppose, but you might as well leave them. These are things that you're just almost certain to use. Uh, and there are other apps that come with Django that are not just default installed. So there's a lot of stuff that comes with Django. In fact, the, um, <laughs> the unofficial mascot of Django, here it is, is a pony, okay? And the idea here and the reason why was because when as Django was coming out and really it's still true today, everyone just keeps asking for feature after feature after feature and eventually it just became a saying like, no, you can't have a pony, right? And Because pe people just wanted everything, okay? Uh, and so it kind of became the unofficial mascot of Django for this like, you know, flying pink pony because of um, basically all the feature requests that people were making. But um, in Django's defense, they have a lot of features. They have pretty much honored quite a bit of those feature requests. Uh, so, and that's why we have such an impressive high level framework that we do. So anyways, we've installed web app. Wow, that was such an easy installation. <laughs> um, so we've got web app installed. And now what we want to go ahead and do is, first of all, while we're in this my site directory, we got to go to the urls.py. So this is that main controller, right? So it leads to everything. As you can see, currently the only thing it leads to is the starting of admin and there is no end. So remember how I said um, that the URL patterns generally, at least at the most basic level, are going to consist with a caret, which begins that and then they end with a dollar sign if you want to end it. You'll notice there is no dollar here, so there is no necessary ending to this URL. All we know for sure is it's going to point to admin.site.urls. You can kind of think of admin.site as its own app because that's exactly what it is, okay? So it just it, this URL is just saying, hey, if, if the pattern begins with admin slash but doesn't end with anything yet, it could end, but it doesn't have to end here. Uh, let's check out the admin.site.urls.py file and see what it says of, as far as where we go from there. So now we're going to add our own, and this one will be um, basically the same. Let's just copy this. Let's take this, copy, paste. So it's a URL. It's not to admin, but it's going to be to web app, let's just say. And we are not going to use admin.site.urls. Instead, what we're going to say is include... And we're going to include the following file, and that's just going to be webapp.urls. So this includes that webapp.urls file, and that'll be .urls.py. That doesn't exist yet, but we're about to make it. So what it'll do is when someone goes to your website slash webapp, it's then going to say, okay, cool. Now that we're here, we need to consult webapp.urls to figure out what, what view we need to serve up for the user. 
Now we're using this keyword include, which we don't actually have yet. So right over here, django.conf.urls uh, import URL. The other thing we need to import is include, okay? That's it there, so we're fine. So let's go ahead and save that. And the next thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is we want to go to, um, we'll close out of this. And now we need to go into that new app, that web app. And the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna serve a view here. So let's go ahead and edit this views, edit. And uh, in here, we're gonna have a few things. Let's see if we had, yeah, we actually have render, but we're not gonna use render here. We're gonna use a simple response. So we're just, for now, we're gonna say from django.http import h, capital H, TTP, capital R. Oh my gosh, I did it twice. <laughs> response. Um, and then we're gonna define index. And then the parameter here is request. Well, I cannot type to it. Uh, and what we want to return here is an, a simple HTTP response. And here you can just write in HTML. This is not how you will normally do it, but it's just what we're going to do just to make this very short. Uh, it'll be just a big hey in the heading to uh, tags. So that's our view for this index request. So that's the view. Now, how do we control that view to show? Well, we use urls.py for this. So that's our views. And now we need a urls.py. We don't actually have one. So I'm just going to just take views, copy, paste, call it urls. And now we're going to open it. And it needs to not uh, be the views. But what we're going to say here for this is going to be from django.conf.urls import url. So that's how we specify a url pattern. And then from period, import views. Period is a relative import. Basically, we're just importing from the current package, okay? So that's how we can keep things very dynamic. So we're just importing views locally, basically, or relatively, not locally. URL patterns is now gonna equal, and this can, well, it's gonna be a list in our case here. Um, and then the URL pattern that we wanna reference is just gonna be a URL and the URL will be, it's a regular expression, and it starts and ends. So this would be basically an index. There's nothing here, it's just start and end, that's that. That's the URL pattern. And if that is the URL pattern, it's gonna return the views.index. So that is here. Views is this, this file dot index is this function. What is it doing? It's returning this response. So close out of that. Oh, I lost this word. Here we go. It returns views dot index. And then we can, we'll give it a name. Uh, for now, that's, well, it needs a namespace. So yeah, so name is index, okay? So once we've done that, uh, we should be all set. I might be forgetting something, but we'll save that, close that. And if I am forgetting something, we'll get an error and then we can explain why those errors are so useful. So uh, we'll bring back over the terminal. The server is not running. So I'm just gonna hit up arrow, up arrow. So Python manage.py run server. Go ahead and, oh, well, we probably need to, let's see, we'll see what it says. Um, you have unimplied migrations, but it probably is okay. So first of all, um, let me pull down. So we visited the home page. The basically this is the index of the website, and it says 404 page not found. And then it goes through and tells you exactly what it looked for. It looked for the following things to be in the URL. It either looked for the starting of the URL to be admin slash, or the starting of the URL to be web app. Which if we go into uh, my site, and then my site and open up that urls.py file. Again, this is that main hub. That's exactly what it did, right? It went through these URL patterns and said, hey, does this URL have admin slash? Nope. Does it have web app slash? Nope. So it returns a 404. Now, what if we say, okay, slash web app? Okay, sure enough, we get, hey! <laughs> Sorry, free headphone users. No, we get, hey, and actually we find out that Indeed, we actually did not get any errors, so we actually did it right the first time through, yay. Uh, and we got that message. So what happened in this case was it did, the URL began with web app slash. So it said, okay, web app slash. When it saw that, it says, okay, we need to include web app dot URLs. So it said, all right, that's fine and dandy. So it went back here and went to web app. 
it went to URLs, opened that up and it read it and it said, okay, what's going on here? Well, this is just, it begins and it ends. So what happened? It's returning this views.index with the name of index. So then it went here to views.index and it returned the following view, which was this and just an HTTP response with, hey, okay, you're welcome. I didn't yell this time. So uh, that's just a really basic example of uh, you know starting an application and connecting that application because again, that's how the Django app actually works. It just connects these applications based on the URLs. And initially when I started out with Django, I was somewhat confused because to me, it just doesn't really make that much sense to have multiple uh, URLs.py. And uh, what makes it nice though, is you could take now, you could, let's say web app is a really epic application. You could take web app and include it in another website and web app can be like, for example, like let's say you include it in another application. So that we're in our my site URLs up high. Um, and instead of it being corresponding to web app, you want it to correspond to um, GGG, okay, or something like this. You could save that. And then what you could do is you could come over to your new app and now we can refresh and actually let's just go GGG. And you'll see that it corresponds there. So, so you can include this in any of your other packages. You just have to click and drag it in, right? And then if it has models, you have to migrate, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. We'll talk about that very soon. But if it has a database net needs, you have to migrate. Um, but if it doesn't, all you have to do is basically you just bring it in and then you have to come over to your main my site, your settings and install the application. But let's be serious. It's not really installing. It's just, you know, you type in the word and boom, it's done. Okay. So hopefully that was a bite sized chunk of Django. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. I'll be happy to help you out where I can. Um, otherwise stay tuned to the next tutorial. And thanks for watching.